Hi, today we're going to be going over this problem of the Balkan Mathematical Olympiad. This was actually the first problem of the first ever Balkan Mathematical Olympiad, which started in 1984. The problem says if you have alpha 1, alpha 2, on all the way up to alpha n in positive reals, such that they all sum up to 1, let's call this condition 1 and this condition 2, prove that well, alpha 1 over 1 plus alpha 2 all the way up to alpha n plus. And now look, in the denominator, there's no alpha 1. Plus alpha 2 over 1 plus alpha 1 plus alpha 3 plus all the way up to alpha n. Again, look, there's no alpha 2. All the way, you keep continuing this, and for each alpha i, you keep adding 1 plus, well, alpha 1, alpha 2, blah, blah, blah all the way up to alpha i plus 1, and then you skip alpha i, and you put alpha i plus 1, and then you keep going all the way up to alpha n. So it's basically a sum of uh, alpha i's over 1 plus all the alphas except alpha i. So you got to prove that this total sum is greater than or equal to n over 2n minus 1. If you want to give the problem a try, pause the video and do so now. One thing to know is that whenever you're given uh, these conditions and inequalities, you gotta always try to, you know, force them in because there's a reason the condition is given. One way you can try to force in uh, condition number two is by seeing that, let's say this denominator, it's got alpha two plus alpha all the way up to alpha n. It's essentially got this part, it's just missing this part. Well, I can rearrange and I can then say alpha two plus, well, alpha three, uh, plus dot 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 all the way up to alpha n. That would actually be 1 minus alpha 1. So this thing is actually 1 minus alpha 1. Now if I take this, I see that, well, this is this quantity, except it's just missing this. So again, I can rewrite this as 1 minus alpha 2. And for this, I can rewrite as 1 minus alpha n. And for each, instead of uh, this whole complicated sum, I can just say it's the sum over all i's of alpha i over 1 minus alpha i but of course there's a one plus here because this one we've still we've still got to deal with this one so in other words i can uh, write it in a more compact form and that compact form it encompasses condition number two the compact form would be for for i guess i from one to n of alpha i over two minus alpha i and I got to prove now that this is greater than or equal to n over 2n minus 1. Let's just write this, oh, sorry. Let's just write this out a bit. That would be alpha 1 over 2 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 over 2 minus alpha 2 plus dot 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 all the way up to alpha n minus over 2 minus alpha n. And this, you got to prove, is greater than or equal to n over 2n minus 1. Righty then, does this look a bit familiar? Well, I can just say that, well, all of these really, they're just the output of a function f of x equals to x over 2 minus x at some alpha, right? Because I, if I put in alpha 1 into f of x, I get this term. If I put alpha 2, I get this term. And... In other words, I can kind of say that this would be f of alpha 1 plus f of alpha 2 plus dot 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 all the way up to f of alpha n is greater than, well, how about I divide both sides by n? Let's just do that. Over n is greater than or equal to 1 over 2 n minus 1. Now, for those of you who've already practiced a bit with inequalities, you guys already know what, what I've just circled is. But for those of you who don't, well, I'd introduce you to Jensen's inequality, and if you haven't seen that before, you can uh, check a post in the description where I've explained Jensen's inequality from the ground up. But essentially, it states that for convex functions, and keep in mind, convex, that means the second derivative is greater than or equal to zero, you'd have f of x1 plus f of x2 all the way up to f of x n, sorry, f of x n, all of that over n is greater than or equal to f of x1 plus x2 plus dot dot xn over n. And uh, 
I'd, I like to see it like this. The average of the output of n x's in a compact set is greater than or equal to the function's value at the average of the n x's in the compact set. Yada, yada, yada. You can see the post in the description if you don't know what it means. Anyways, I got uh, you, you know now that, well, that's kind of the, the idea here. We're, go we're going to have to try to bring in Jensen's inequality somehow. And to do that, well, it seems obvious we need to first off know what is f of x equals to x over 2 minus x. Is this convex? Well, we can just do the second derivative test. No need to graph it out or whatever. And uh, this is a bit boring, so I can do this on my own. You get f prime of x is uh, 2 minus 2 over x squared. And you then get f prime prime of x is equal to 4 over... 2 minus x cubed. Yeah? So, uh, right. What is the sign of uh, f prime prime of x? Well, you can see that if it's, well, if x is less than 2, for example, then it's positive. But if x is greater than 2, then we have a problem. It's negative. However, this is where you got to remember. We only used one condition. Keep in mind, always got to use your conditions. I'd say take them. If you write them down in exams, take them once you've used them. And you might need to use them again, by the way. But you know, once you know that, well, I haven't used this condition. Something is fishy if I haven't used this condition. Well, let's try to use this condition. First off, if I have numbers that add up to 1 that are all positive, well, that means the alpha i, all of them, they must be in the set 0, 1. That's obvious. They're positive reals. And obviously, well, positive reals means that they can't be zero. So you'd have this. Alpha i's are in this set. So does that help us find the sign of f prime prime of x? Of course it does. Because if you have x in 0, 1, you'd know that 2 minus x is greater than, uh, what is it, 0, or sorry, greater than 1 as well. And therefore, this is greater than one, greater than zero, or it's positive. So now you've got that the second derivative is positive. So therefore, this is indeed convex. And now I can put a check mark on the second on the first condition and say, all right, I've used that as well. Let's see. We might need to use it again, by the way. Sometimes in problems, you got to use conditions twice. Anyways. So if I do then apply Jensen's inequality, I can then say f of alpha 1 plus f of alpha 2 plus f, or sorry, let's just go all the way up to f of alpha n over n is greater than or equal to f of, let's just say, alpha average, okay? Now you see this, well, this is exactly just this expression right here, right? So I got to somehow prove uh, again, just to note, this is this expression. This whole thing right here divided by n. Right, so all I got to prove is that, well, this f prime or f of alpha average, it's equal to 1 over 2n minus 1 or greater than or equal to 1 over 2n minus 1, something like that, either one of them. Well, let's try to find its value. What would be, and now you know alpha average is alpha 1 plus alpha, alpha 2 all the way all to alpha n over n. And now if I do just try to, you know, plug it into the function, just normal plug and play, uh, you'd get f of alpha average is actually alpha 1 plus alpha 2 dot 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 all the way up to alpha n over n. This is the x in the numerator part right here. And it's going to be over 2 minus, uh, that's going to be alpha 1 plus alpha 2 dot 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 up to alpha n over n. Alrighty then. So, well, I know this is just equal to 1, the numerator. And now for this, I can multiply the n inside. I'd get 2n, and then this n and this n would cancel. So I'd simply get minus this expression. Well, I know this expression is just 1. That's, again, the second condition. And this is what I meant. You sometimes have to use conditions again, but it's they're usually obvious. So you therefore have that f of alpha average is 1 over 2n minus 1. And hey, well, I don't know why this keeps showing up, but 
Now you've basically got your problem solved. You you proved what you wanted to prove. You essentially proved that alpha 1 over 2 minus alpha 1 plus uh, alpha 2 over 2 minus alpha 2 all the way up to alpha n over 2 minus alpha n is greater than or or all of that over n is greater than or equal to 1 over 2n minus 1. Just multiply both sides by n, and you're done. That's that's the first problem of the Balkan Math Olympiad, and it's quite a nice application of Jensen's inequality. I enjoyed this quite a bit. If you guys know of any other way to check uh, convexity, I know that you can try to graph this, but that seems that seems a bit of a bit of a hassle but if you do know any other way do let me know in the comments perhaps there's a faster way than you know or less boring way than taking second derivatives anyways if you guys did enjoy this video leave a like and do subscribe i'm gonna keep posting olympiad problems and soon enough i'm also gonna keep posting explanation problems so you guys are in for quite a ride